Okay. Better than that. All right, but I think, I think we are good to go. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order and start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, Lonnie, we'll just have you stand up. We'll do the oath right away. Uh, Chris, we'll just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Dan Evans. Zelensky. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And that I will discharge faithfully the duties and I will discharge faithfully the duties of the office of mayor or council member the of the mayor. office of council mm -hmm. member in the county of Dodge, in the county of Dodge, state of Minnesota, state of Minnesota, to the best of my judgment and ability, to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll have these for you to uh, sign here as well. Okay. Thank you. Move on to the approval of the agenda. Any deletions, additions, corrections? Dan, anything? I have nothing. Nope. Wait. Tim? I do have a number two under committee reports. Uh, would be Planning Commission update. No. I think no. Lonnie? Nothing. Okay. I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as changed. <coughs> I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have I'll a second? second. Thanks, Dwayne. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, consent agenda. Things in there. Any questions for the administrator on the consent agenda? Okay, entertain a motion to approve as presented. So moved. Thanks, Dwayne. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, Lonnie. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No visitors. Uh, mayor's report committee appointments. Um, there are three people being appointed back that want to continue on their commissions that is and I think we'll do all these together can we do them all together we don't have them separate okay on um, the planning and planning commission Joe Fitch his term was up we'll do another two years there he said he want to do that thanks Joe uh, park board we agreed last time to add an additional seat so we've got Sarah Hirsch and Chris Petrie for new terms and Chuck Col Coleman to uh, renew for another two years um, so I will make the motion to accept those four appointments. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Designations. I could have fun with this, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, you see everything in there, the designations and subcommittees. Um, anybody have an objection to the committees they're on or would like to make a change? Yeah. You can let me know. But so I'm going to move that we uh, accept the designation of the subcommittees as presented. Second. So, second. Thanks, Dwayne. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Committee reports. Oh, I'm sorry, public form. Was there any cards? No. I didn't see cards. Okay. Uh, committee report emergency management plan that is in your packet. Under F1, everybody have a chance to read through that? Thanks everybody for getting that together because that was something that was, uh, I know the county kind of spearheaded that. And, and well, actually, the city we're city. kind of, you know, the, the county's doing their right now. Separate one. Separate, yeah, separate, okay. but uh, do want to thank uh, the members. Um, um, so we're members of the committee. They uh, put a lot of time into it, really reviewed it a lot, and we want to give you a chance to just take a look at it at this meeting, and then hopefully we'll be able to approve that uh, later in the, the month here. Okay. I think that's our plan right now. And I know if there's any questions, um, Lonnie or Mel, both well cognizant of the situation and what's involved there. So. Okay. No, it's just wanted appreciate. to add that Tim did a really good job bringing us various different sample plans from other communities that we could look at and base ours on. Yeah. So that really gave us a good starting point and that was incredibly helpful and very good idea. Well, so we had a lot that. of staff involvement too. Um, the police and fire department are obviously involved and Charlie's taking a good look at it too. Um, so one thing that will come out of this, and it was on your designations, 
is that eventually we will need to designate the emergency management coordinator. And in different communities of different people, it falls to the mayor initially. So that'll be uh, that'll be up to you once we get going on it, whether you want to serve in that capacity or you want to designate someone else. So it, it does say the mayor or his designee. So, Chris, just so you can. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I I read through it very okay. clearly. Yeah. So. No, I, I read every word. No, it's much appreciated though. After a year and a half ago, when we really had no, I mean, there are plans in place, but not really anything formal or designated. So appreciate that. Uh, planning commission update. So I just wanted to provide an update uh, based on the, the advice of uh, our planning commission uh, meeting on Monday, and then the uh, the consultant Brad from uh, from Hoisington. Um, we had a long conversation about um, a change to the uh, the zoning code, which of course we only passed it uh, two months ago. But it seems like that's how it sort of goes sometimes. Is you don't know what you're going to deal with until you do. Um, it's primarily focused on the the central business district and the RC district, which is sort of the uh, I guess subsidiary business district, including like where High V is and that sort of thing. So sort of the somewhat outlying areas. Um, the request would be to amend the code to allow for drive-throughs in the central business district and the, the RC district, which was previously allowed via conditional use permit in the prior code all the way back to, um, as far as Linda can, can tell, 1996 or seven or so. So when the change was made to adopt the new code, that was a use that was restricted to not be allowed anymore. There, there is no current way of doing it. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware that um, the Planning Commission and their conversation seemed favorable to amending that sort of to the prior conditions, um, partly due to the fact that we do have, in particular, one parcel that will be directly affected by it on, on Main Street. Um, there was some concern that um, it reduces the walkability component of the downtown. I mean, I think what Brad indicated as best practices is that you don't necessarily want to have drive-throughs on your Main Street because it does sort of provide some traffic, uh, potential traffic issues. But because of the prior use, I felt comfortable uh, with this particular um, site, you know, I think that each one of these conditional use permits as they would come across would be evaluated individually, whether it be warranted or not. So just wanted you to be aware of that, that it's a, it's a change that's coming and uh, they had a good conversation about it. I think it was very helpful. Um, so that's the update that I had. I don't know if Dwayne or if Lon, you wanted to add anything to that. I think he covered it. Yeah, I, I think the two points is whether it would be allowed based on current on standards or whether they needed to go through the conditional use permit. And depending on whether it was permitted by standards, uh, certainly uh, to the developer, it's an advantage because they don't have to go through the public hearings and everything associated with the conditional use permit. However, um, you have, on the city perspective, you have some limitations as to what conditions you would be able to put on that if you were allowing it to be permitted by standards. So there's a positives and a negatives for both, and there's a fair amount of discussion that still needs to be taking place. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that? No. Okay. On to Old Business One Fire Department Tanker Truck. There's two items in there. So this is something that's uh, been in the planning sort of for the last five years, and I'll have Joe come up to the hot seat here in a little minute, and he can talk about it a little bit more depth. But um, the tanker trucks, we have two tanker trucks, one's in 1991, one's in 1995. And as part of an agreement that was signed with the townships that we cover approximately five years ago, they had decided to purchase a, an additional truck to replace the 1991, which is obviously past, uh, past its, its serviceable life. I mean, they're kind of keeping it going with parts, but it's gotten to be difficult to replace. Um, and the tankers are typically used primarily in the townships because they don't have the water source. Um, so they're actually looking at paying for about 75% of this and the city would be on the, on the hook for the other 25% uh, as part of the agreement. Um, at that time, the amount that was mentioned was $140,000. And um, what was going to be happening was they were going to retrofit the chassis of the current truck. They found that not to be cost effective doing research at this time. They found that it actually would cost more to do the retrofit than it would to be purchasing a more modern um, model, in essence. And so there was a lot of conversation about whether they wanted to do a new one, which could be $250,000, or uh, a newer used vehicle. And the townships, um, they, after a long discussion, 
decided that they wanted to go with something that was a used but newer model, which would allow us to get on kind of a 10-year replacement track, which the goal would be there to have you know, one tanker replaced every 10 years so that you'd have one that's new and one that's 10 years old, and then at the next 10-year mark, you'd be able to replace the 20-year model and a little bit better rotation. Right now, we've got ones that are only four years apart, so it doesn't, it's not as cost-effective for us or for them. Um, so, Joe, why don't you come up, and you could talk a little bit more about it. After they researched it, they did find a, a model which you received the information on in, in Dropbox uh, for about 160000 which was a number that was authorized by the townships. It would increase the city's portion um, by a certain amount, but uh, we wanted to bring it to you just because, um, you know, I know Joe's had some questions and some thoughts about it. So go ahead, Joe. Yeah, so what, what you, uh, Tim, laid it out uh, beautifully, what, what we've really kind of dealt with over the last probably two or three months with the townships and then, and then the, the contract um, over the last five years. Um, we had originally uh, uh, had a, a 2018 um, that we were set to uh, approve. The, the townships were going to approve that. Um, we uh, found out that the, the price on that was about $30,000 different than what we were uh, expecting. Um, so we immediately started looking for some other alternatives that got us a little bit closer to that $160,000 range that the uh, uh, townships had approved in the, the, the preliminary meeting. Um, so we found this, we, uh, the truck that you guys all have in front of you, um, this 2016 Mac. Um, there's a, a, a couple of things that will need to be done to this truck um, when we get it, because uh, it is from Texas. Uh, so it's not outfitted with uh, pump heaters and, and some things like that. Um, but those, those are minimal costs for, for us um, with, the, with the upgrade on the truck that we'll be getting. Um, this truck in particular, a couple of differences between it and what we currently have. Um, this truck will have a 1,500 gallon per minute uh, pump versus the uh, 750 that we currently have on our, on our tanker. Um, it's also got a 2,500 gallon tank versus the 2,000 um, that we have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, the biggest thing with this truck, the way we will set it up, it'll almost be considered as a third uh, engine um, because of the size of the pump that it carries. Um, the, the pump on this truck will be the same as what we have on the ladder truck. So from a, from a water standpoint and a, and a usability standpoint, um, we, will, we will definitely get, get our, our money's worth out of this. Um, if you looked at the purchase agreement that they sent, um, this uh, company is going to give us 18000 for our 1991 um, that we'll be using for, for trade-in um, on this truck. And other than, um, you know, some minor cosmetic things and getting a radio uh, put in it, um, we're, we're pretty much ready to go uh, once it passes the pump test. So. So those costs going to be spread out to the townships as well? <coughs> the which? The improvements that you want to make. So the base cost will be $160,000 or around there after the trade-in, but and that means that the city's portion would be about $40,000. Those additional costs that you have for upgrading it to, you know, for example, be usable in the winter season here, those costs are going to be billed out to the townships as well at the same percentage, or what do you think in there? It, I think it, we haven't really looked into, like, what those what those costs will actually amount to. Um, I would think if they're, if they're substantial to the point where I would be worried about my maintenance budget for the year. Well, and that's, that's what I mean. Is yeah. I don't want you to use your entire maintenance budget on an item that only is tangently related to yeah. the city itself. Yep, yep, yeah. If, if, if it came to that, then, then yeah, we would, we would have to, to push some of that cost off on the townships. But um, if it ends up to be just a, a, a minimal cost, I, I don't see that going through meeting after meeting to discuss the, the costs and the, uh, you know, with, with how we would have to do that with the townships would be, would be in our, our best interest to do that, so. Okay. Any questions for the chief? Dan? No? No. Thank you. Yeah. I believe he would be seeking uh, action uh, okay. for approval on this. Um, 
Okay. Can I ask one question? Yes. Will that pump test be done before you take it, or yes? Is it, okay. Yep. The, the the purchase would be would contingent be, on would, that. Yep. Would be contingent yep. on okay. it, it passing a pump test. Sure. And NFPA has specific rules for pump testing this time of year, so it's sure. I mean, it's got to be done inside temperature yep. control, um, and and they're allowing us to choose. Who does the testing? Okay. Um, so we've got some some groups that we work with in the cities that they're going to take it to. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? No. Honor to motion. I'll make that motion to, to purchase approve. the okay. yep. so second. second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks for your work on that, everybody. Um, just one other highlight with the uh, township fire. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, reauthorized contracts with the townships for coverage. Uh, the <coughs> primary townships we have, which is Canastillo and, and Manorville, um, have signed their contracts, which I think you've seen saw one of those already. Um, we are going to be increasing it as a three year contract. We're going to be increasing it 2% per year for those townships. So that's okay. uh, related to our regular cost. So. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Transmission study, old business number two. Uh, this is an item that was discussed, um, well, it's been discussed a number of times. I know it was discussed at the work, the planning work session we had last spring, early spring there. Um, it was completed uh, just in December. It was one of three studies that were indicated that would be completed, but um, due to the turnover, staff turnover, some of the direction at uh, CMPS has maybe not been quite as thorough. Um, but this is the first that's been completed. And having a chance to review it with Jared, um, it indicates that right now the city of Cassin is uh, is compliant on all of our transmission related issues. Um, however, it also shows that um, if we have the opportunity to take part in a transmission project, it would be financially beneficial for the utility and the community as well. Um, we have identified a few potential projects in that regard, some transmission projects um, that would be uh, very beneficial to the utility and its uh, potential uh, return on investment. So um, we'll continue to follow up on that. And um, if there's any questions anyone has, I'd be glad to, to answer those at this time. Thank you. Anybody else? No nope. questions? No. Okay, new business, snow emergency policy, H1. Um, talking with the uh, public works director, now obviously this year so far we've been fortunate, I think, uh, to have a pretty mild uh, winter. Um, you know, who knows what tomorrow brings, and it's, uh, you know, we may get a little bit uh, bigger chunk here Thursday and through Friday, but um, we had that conversation, and one of the issues that he's run into, and I know the police perhaps have as well to a certain extent, is that uh, we have folks parking on the street in areas that need to be plowed out, and so it creates a lot of additional work. Um, so um, I talked to him, I asked him, I said, you know, does the city have a snow plowing ice control policy of some nature? And there, there have been things they've talked about over the last couple of years, but they haven't ever um, really put it down on paper. And that includes, uh, I think Linda's going to bring that up, um, some, some snow plow routes in essence. Um, what we're not looking at is we're not looking at uh, towing vehicles from all the city streets because obviously that's not cost effective or prudent. But we would be looking at potentially um, a little bit more enforcement on areas where there are emergency routes, where you know you have ambulance, uh, fire service, that sort of thing, which would be um, you know necessities to try and uh, move through as, uh, with our plowing in a prudent way. Not looking for anything definitive tonight or even this this winter. You know we would probably take this in and make it an effect probably in the the next cycle, uh, but some of the components would enable us to uh, declare, for example, a snow emergency. And typically what I've seen with those, and, and you may be familiar with some other communities, um, it might actually be the day after the snowfall where the city would put out, you know, it's a snow emergency, you know, at 12, p you know, 12 midnight, uh, you need to have your, your, your cars off the street, otherwise there would be ticketing or something like that. And that would allow the, the Public Works Department to go back and clear those areas out. A lot of other communities um, utilize that. So. It's for you to take a look at, and uh, you know it's uh, just got some basic things in there. Um, these are some of the routes you've got on the screen up, up front here. You can sort of see the primary routes we'd be looking at are um, Main Street, and then the the large north, uh, what rather east to west crossing streets. Uh, so you've got you can see those kind of in blue. Um, those would be ones that would be primary routes that we would look to try and and some of them, for example, 16th Street. There's you know basically no parking anyways. Um, so there wouldn't be a lot of impact to uh, residents in any way. But um, I know Charlie's been taking a look at that and making sure that um, he's uh, able to manage this uh, issue as much as he can. So 
that's what it is. That's why it's there. Just something we wanted to uh, to bring to you, and so that you can read through. And if there's changes you want to see, then uh, absolutely those are going to be able to be implemented. And there are four copies of that in the. Uh, so they're all the same. Yes. I was, I was well, trying to look at them. I'm like, so don't Linda, study them. Linda and I were attempting to get it to go in the Dropbox, <laughs> and uh, with the new turnover, we uh, we did get there. They're in there, though. So, so just can, they're in there. I spent yeah, a lot of time trying to figure out. Looking and like they look the same. Uh, <laughs> trying to figure out the difference. So, yeah, don't worry about that too much. But uh, but yeah, so that is kind of where we're at. So I don't know if there's any questions on that tonight. But just uh, need to know what the key is. And the key yeah. is down at the. I can't do this left. <laughs> Can you scroll down? Bottom right shows whose route is what. On yeah, the those are just uh, the, the, in the key, actually, you can ignore the key. It just shows whose routes they are. But oh. um, <laughs> that is, I mean, they're the snow emergency routes, and we're looking at prioritizing those There's ones in the light blue. blue, 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 blue so the light yeah. blue and, yeah. well, and Main Street. And Main Street. So those are the ones okay. that, that Charlie right. thought were the most essential. And also, you know, we just, we run into an issue with, especially Main Street, when there's vehicles there. It's you know it's impossible for them to get snow moved in a prudent way, and then what ends up happening is folks clear the sidewalk, and then it gets pushed down the street again. So it even kind of acerbates the you know we and we do have ice. You know if people are walking around in town, that's probably one of the main areas they walk around. For all the businesses down there, we want to try and eliminate that ice as much as possible, yep. especially for our elderly residents. Um, there's a question out there, Mr. Mayor. This last snowstorm, they normally come and do Fifth Avenue, but they were doing the avenues first. You mean streets? Or streets first, not the avenue. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's going to... Well, I don't know. I can't speak to specifics. I do know we have some new drivers. And um, I know Charlie has been trying to um, get them into the mode of it by doing things a little bit differently and maybe has changed a few things in terms of how he's reassigned it. I don't know if that will continue to be the case or if it's just something they... This last snowfall we had was, uh, was a good snowfall because it wasn't overly heavy and it allowed some newer drivers some practice time in the cab. And so they may have been looking at some of those options. I don't know. Brandon, you haven't heard anything on that, have you? Yeah, I know they were tweaking some of the yeah. mapping stuff. So yeah. I'm not really specific to say so. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, number two under new business, 2021 liquor license fee. <coughs> I had asked the administrator to add this to the agenda. I know we have visited a couple times last year when everybody got shut down, people with liquor licenses got shut down. We said we weren't going to do any refunds, that type of thing, for 2020, but we'd address it in 2021. So I would just like to get everybody's opinion on it. I'm, I mean, basically for the better part of eight to nine months, they haven't been able to operate at all or partially, and they paid for their full fee for 2020. I think the right thing to do would be to waive the fee for 2021 because even though they're back open, it's still limited or percentage. So um, I don't think that's going to be a huge blow to our budget as far as that goes. But so I don't know how everybody feels about that or what we would have to do. But I know I did talk to uh, Jan because she handles most of that permitting, mm -hmm. and she indicated that the the most uh, well, I suppose easiest is not the right word, but the the best way to do it would be actually to have people pay their regular fee and then to refund that to them. And I, she said it has to do with the state licensing. Okay. Why, why not charge them a dollar? What's that? Why not charge them a dollar and be done with it? Well, I think part of it would be because our fee schedule is set with those fees in it. Okay. You know, and, and you know, whatever the fee is, you know, $250, $300, you know, unless we want to change the fee schedule, Oh. That was kind of what she felt was, well, you're charging okay. the fee. If the council would choose to rebate that fee to them or rebate 50% or 20, whatever, you know, whatever you decide to do, it just makes it a cleaner process for her okay. as opposed to we're not going to charge them at all. And, I mean, part, partly it would become, you know, I, and I'm, I don't have a preference. That was what she indicated to me was a simpler process for her. It amounts to the same thing. Yep. You know, they're going to give us a check. We're going to file it all at the state, and we're going to say the fee was paid, you know, that's done, and then we can rebate that to them. Sure. But that would be uh, up to the council. I, I, you know, I don't have a, a huge feeling one way or the other. If it's going to create confusion or something, let's do it that way. Let's collect the fee and rebate it right back to them. We don't want to confuse the state. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I'll be honest with you, that's part of it, though, because I know that things with the state have been taking longer. And I think if they see something that looks weird, they're going to be a call. I mean, she's going to sure. get a phone call from somebody like at, yeah. at age. They're going to go, well, what happened? 
And I don't know, Nancy, do you know off the top of your head what the income off of the liquor like what kind of number we're looking at? Well, no, not right off. I thought it was like twenty five hundred I could see if I can find that in our revenue here quick, just so we know what oh, the actual amount is. Uh total. Because oh. it's about five hundred a license plus about two hundred for Sundays. And we have right. about four or five of them. Oh, that's fine. I mean, one question would be, so I know we have a new permit this year for someone who was not in operation last year. So are we waiving that even though they were not impacted last, you know, they weren't impacted last year. You know, we have a, a small brewer that's, you know, going to be operating here in the next, if they're not already operating. I guess they're not yet because they have to come to council. Sure. So that, that permit will be coming for a public hearing. Right. So that would be my question is, so, I mean, to me, I think we would, we would apply mm -hmm. this to the people that paid in 2020. Yeah. Yes. Not necessarily to, if a new bar were open today, I mean, I mean, unless that's not the feeling of the that, council. That's not fair. I, I mean, if, if they had to endure this last year, they're the ones that should be rebated. Right. If somebody new comes in, they're in operation from day one. It, they should so pay. is it a new on sale that they can actually consume alcohol at this brewery? Yes. Okay. One exception is um, new El Patron. They've been in business for a couple of months, but that'd be another good one. Thanks for bringing that. I don't up. know if that's a consideration mm -hmm. at all, because they paid their license mm -hmm. for this year. I mean, I guess the the ones that I'm thinking of, obviously events um, on Main Street, Pete's. Those two would have been uh, the Legion probably is, a, yeah. is applicable to them. You know, the other ones I don't. You know, and I just want the clarification because, as I said, it's not a. It's not a problem. We just want to make sure as staff we know what you guys want. Yeah. To do. E even though you can open today, you're still 25 or 50 percent capacity, which means you're still behind the eight ball a little bit there, as far as eating and dining indoors. And most restaurants and bars have a tough time at 100 percent capacity when everybody's going out, let alone. 25 or 50 percent capacity. So whether they were in business last year or not, I don't know. The, the only thing I fear is, on the other hand, somebody still, even if June everybody opens up 100 percent, you still might have that business that, hey, I had a rough year. You let me buy last year. You know, can you give me a break for the following year? Because it was tough for us. I think it was just, if we're going to do it, my opinion is if, if we would waive liquor license fees for on sale for 2021 for anybody, rather than pick and choose who gets it and who doesn't, because then you got to have the rationale why you do it. Well, you were in business last year or not. Well, we didn't okay. refund last year's fee. We refunded 2021's fee. So let's just say that due to the COVID, we're, we're suspending liquor fees for 21, but don't say because everybody had a tough year last year because then you open it up. Right. It's a one-year thing. Yes. And you have to pay it, then we'll refund it. Right. Okay. Back. Perfect. Because yep. that keeps the state happy. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Okay. So that's my opinion. Do I anything? Uh, there's so many different scenarios to try to rationalize. Yeah. Um, I, I think collecting the fee and rebating based on, you know, what they paid last year, I think, is reasonable. Yeah. Dan, anything? No, anything? Okay. So I'll make the motion to not charge the liquor fee for 2021. To charge and then rebate. Well, to charge it. Well, re the re I, 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 I take that back, rewind. Okay, I'll make a motion to rebate the liquor license fees for the on sale establishments in 2021 as a one time okay. thing. And so what I'll. Well, I'll have a second. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'll second it. So any other discussion or questions? Well, what I will, what the process I would have during discussion. All in favor, say that. Oh, okay. We're discussing it. Okay, all right. I would just say the process I would have is we'll inform the businesses so that they know to still continue to pay because I know I had one question from one of the businesses in town. They said, are you guys going to do anything? And I said, well, we're talking about it tonight. So I will notify them uh, of the process. They still need to pay, and then we'll be rebating them, and that will hopefully satisfy any questions? Do we want to add down there due to COVID or just doesn't matter? I think that's implied. Okay. Just for yeah, future no, doubt. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
um, administrator's report. Sure. Uh, you've got the report there, and you can see there are a number of <coughs> items in there, and we'll talk about a few more of those tonight on the personnel side. Uh, just wanted to highlight a couple of things. I know Brandon will be talking about the LRIP program a little bit later. Um, we did receive a number of applications. I believe it was nine. The last I was told for the uh, the sewer or wastewater operator uh, licensing. I think we've got an 11 now. 11? Okay. Well, that's great. So that job has closed, so we'll be starting our review of those positions, and uh, we'll have more information for, uh, for the council at a future meeting. Um, <coughs> CMPS uh, did have a meeting uh, actually yesterday in Rochester. We, we reviewed a number of applications for that. We brought the number down from 20 to 6. So there are a number that will be going forward, um, doing some interviews with those folks at the end of the month here. Uh, you've got the EMS plan there. Um, I know a couple of things that um, Linda's brought to my attention is we do have some, um, some interesting unemployment requests that we've had been dealing with. Uh, so folks that we wouldn't necessarily see unemployment, uh, you know, benefit requests from the states basically have been saying, well, go ahead and apply. So we've been dealing with that at a staff level and it's been kind of interesting. Um, and then I have a couple other items under my report there just to talk briefly about that. <coughs> Were there any questions about that first? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the next item would be the lawn sign memo that's included in there. And I know I've talked uh, with council members about this already. Just uh, something administratively, we uh, had a conversation with our uh, city attorney in response to some resident questions about those. And I think that a lot of that's sort of starting to go away as it naturally does after a while. <coughs> but I think um, the city attorney advised me that uh, removing some of that language in the code would allow us to, uh, to fit the needs that we have uh, without doing a dramatic change to the code. Is that correct, Melanie? Uh, yes. Um, that part that in 2016 the Supreme Court essentially said you can't include language like that. It's unconstitutional because it's... Um, regulating based on content of the speech, um, I think we could, we just need to remove that from the ordinance. So we'll be planning on bringing a revised uh, section for you guys to uh, take a look at in the, in the future here. But we are still going to leave the part about too close to the street blocking, <coughs> blocking traffic via. Yeah, absolutely. No safety, uh, no safety changes, only the, the, the speech aspect of it will be, will be removed. So. And then the other item I've got there is uh, an update on the natural gas franchise fee, which the council approved last fall. Um, it is uh, taking effect. Um, and after talking it over with the, uh, the utility um, and uh, kind of thinking it through, we're actually going to have that start taking effect in March, which actually lines up well for hopefully a, a warming cycle, which should moderate the cost to uh, customers, which uh, we think would be a benefit. Um, so you can read through the language. Um, the nice thing is, is gonna, it's going to list on there as a franchise fee, which is a positive. I know that Nancy had some concerns about sometimes utilities try to put it in there as a tax. It's not intended to be that. But uh, So you've got that there, and moving forward, we'll expect to collect revenue, and I think 2021 20, uh, will give us a good baseline for you know, nine months of the year. We'll have an idea of what that should generate in the future. You know, that will allow us to plan if we need to use those revenues for our, some special projects as the, that were previously identified by the council. So, and I think that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you very much. Engineer's report. All right. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, two quick ones tonight. Uh, there's two requests for council actions uh, in your council packet. I'll quickly go through those and answer any questions you may have. Uh, the first one is regarding 16th Street Northwest extension and a possible funding application. Uh, quick background on this, the city completed a feasibility report for roundabout and extending 16th Street uh, from Highway 57 out to Casa 21. Uh, we secured some funding. Uh, Dwayne and myself presented to MnDOT and a group there. Uh, secured some funding through the MnDOT LPP uh, partnership program for uh, the roundabout itself that did not include the extension of 16th Street to the west, so we haven't necessarily identified a funding opportunity for the extension of 16th from the roundabout over to the dump road. Uh, we did look at uh, municipal state aid. Uh, dollars can be used for that portion of the project. Uh, there isn't going to be enough in our municipal state aid bank uh, that keeps growing every year. Uh, we were looking at borrowing ahead. Uh, MnDOT's uh, currently stopped that borrowing ahead process. Uh, we're thinking that that's going to right the ship uh, in the coming years, so we'll have that available to us, uh, but we still may be short. So the question tonight is, uh, we do have a uh, possibility of uh, applying for some um, LRIP or LRIP uh, funding. This funding is what we secured for 16th Street East, uh, the paving of the old township road going out to Dodge 15. Uh, we secured that uh, funding from this program. 
Um, this program's back in front of us through the local bonding bill. There's $75 million that's up, kind of up for grabs, if you will, between counties, cities, and townships in the state of Minnesota. Uh, so that's more than what it's been in the past, so it's kind of a little attractive program or opportunity here uh, based on that amount of money. Uh, most of the heavy lifting's been done. We already have the feasibility report out. Hey, add the cost in front of us. We've already actually started some of the engineering for the roundabout, uh, kind of a holding pattern again for the extension of 16th Street, but we're planning on ultimately building that. That's been a, a goal from the cities, from the comprehensive planning process, from our capital improvement planning process. So the more that we may be able to put into that pot to get funded, I think, is in the city's best interest. So uh, why this application? Uh, may not be uh, successful. We've got a fair amount of money through different programs. Some of the projects I just described in addition to the Safe Routes to School we'll talk about in a bit, Highway 57. So that's been kind of a ding on the city when uh, MnDOT and the, the folks and the engineers and uh, fellow cities look at the city of Cass and we've secured a fair amount of funding. So that may, may come up, but again, there's a lot of money on the table and a good opportunity here. Um, so if you direct staff to proceed with the application, I'm expecting this to be one to $1.25 million ask. Uh, that section of 16th Street is you know, going to be pretty expensive. It's going to be heavy-duty road, if you will, going across there. Um, and again, we would likely supplement that with uh, municipal state aid money, working with the local developer there to ultimately get it built in some timeline. Um, I'm thinking it'd be like a 2023 project, potentially 2022 at the roundabout, but we got a lot of irons already in the fire in that timeline, so uh, we'll see how that kind of works out. So, um, any questions, comments? Again, we're actually asking for a just direction of moving forward with this application. If you provide us the direction to move forward, uh, Tim and myself and public work staff will get the application together. Again, heavy lifting's done. We've already done on the last phase, um, likely bringing resolutions to the city, to the county, to the school, uh, potentially letter of recommendation from uh, the police and fire and whatnot uh, to support this application. So that's what the work we're looking at doing to get the application together. So it's doing, I think, March, so we need to kind of get some direction here to move forward. So let's do it. Can't, yeah. can't hurt. I'll move to approve having you go ahead with the application process. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second that. And all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number two. All right. Thank you. Yeah, second item, safe route to school project schedule. Uh, we've been kind of shifting some projects around here, so uh, working with city staff and kind of reviewing what projects we have uh, moving forward, um, questioning if we want to, recommending ultimately if we want to tweak the safe route to school project schedule slightly. Uh, quick background, this is the funding you receive for kind of the trails around the school, uh, kind of on the back side of the uh, uh, intermediate school, um, some of the trail for this 16th Street extension we just uh, discussed, um, and then also including kind of on the north side of Houston's to Tyne or 57 project to get that trail extended. So that's what the Safe Routes to School project is. Uh, we currently have that um, plan for 22 construction. Uh, the funds technically uh, on the MnDOT side of things aren't gonna be available till October 21. That's why we're planning 22 construction. The city has the option to construct ahead, get reimbursed later. This is about a $375,000 project, so that's what we'd be looking at if we constructed it this construction season, um, kind of riding that $375,000 kind of through the summer with the idea that we'd be ending construction about the same time that the funds would be available. Um, so that's the um, ins and outs of that project. We also have the Northwest Trail Project. We'd be likely kind of tying these two projects together. Uh, that's a lot smaller project, so we need to get some economy of scale associated with tying the two projects together. They're very similar in construction, both trail projects. Um, in addition to that, with moving or having the roundabout construction in 2022, we're going to see a lot of traffic on 16th Street and rerouting traffic to 5th Avenue, and that's uh, in the project scope of the Safe Routes of School. So if we can get in there and get this built this construction season, we can get that contractor out of there well along and the 16th Street roundabout contractor comes in in 2022. So it's a little bit of an advantage there from a traffic impact. So. Uh, we talked to the staff, uh, Public Works, myself, and I think the administration's on board with tweaking this, scheduled to move it up to 21 construction. Did talk to the school, they were also in support of it. So looking for discussion and uh, ultimately a recommendation. How safe is the funding for safe routes to school if we front it and then in October comes, they say, shucks, we're out of money. And it comes from all the way from the federal, so it's um, in index, so it's in, in, uh, encumbered, so I don't, I've never seen a encumbered fund project in the short yep. of timeline go away. All right. I can confirm that's so maybe it would be a conditional approval that is encumbered. So, what kind of cost savings are you expecting? It's hard to tell. I, I just think the more cost savings be potentially on the Northwest Trail. I mean, it's a seventy, eighty thousand dollar construction cost. So I'd like to kind of tie these two together. 
we truly won't actually tie them together because this is federal money, so it's just going to mess up the, the project. We'd have to go backwards and do more engineering, so we're not going to do that. But I think we bid them out at the same time, get one contractor a little more efficient on our side of things, um, dealing with contractors to get two projects built. Uh, and again, they're similar. Um, so I think it's it's in our best interest to do it. And it's kind of hard to say. We don't know what the bidding environment's looking like for next spring. We think it's going to be still pretty solid. Um, 2022 maybe be a little different. I think it's going to be more attractive on slowing down, but I think we're going to see the economy of scale by getting them together. So it's hard to quantify, though. And again, we are already have kind of the heavy lifting done for that. We got the plans are you know <coughs> getting wrapped up and going to review. So where would the upfront funds come from? Well, obviously, that'd be a conversation we'd have. But I think what we'd end up looking at is, um, you know, there. If you look at the income statement actually in your packet, you can kind of see that already. Uh, let's see here. What page is that on? Towards the end of the packet, you've got the income statement, and it does show a line item for the safe routes to school, which is negative fund balance. So I think in the short term, you'd have a negative fund balance in that fund, and then that would be repaid. Uh, in essence, the general fund would be funding the money. Um, and then as that would be repaid by the by the, the federal government or the state, whoever is issuing that. Okay. Um, we'll have all the paid invoices and things like that. And my experience with safe routes to school has been as long as you have the paid invoices, it's not it's not very difficult. I mean, the money is encumbered as, as long as it's there. That's the biggest thing. And, you know, the federal government, your, your knowledge of the future there is as good as mine is in terms of the reliability, but I think that would be what would end up happening. I don't know, Nancy, do you have any other feedback on that? No, I mean, we've done that with several projects, is, you know, to get them started, and then the funding comes later, especially with grants. So, But it sounds like it would all get done in the next year anyway, so the funds that we set aside that we've budgeted, we would transfer over once okay. the project actually got started, and then there's um, that amount <coughs> that the school has committed to pay, too. Okay. Thank you. Danny, anything? No. Oh. No, anything? Line? No. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I'd, I'd make a motion that we would move forward and do it in 2021. Okay. Do I'll second. second. Thanks, Dwayne. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, personnel item K1, the it's like Groundhog's Day. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse <Six> me. <time. coughs> um, we have... Uh, firefighter insurance resignation uh, for retirement um, so we'll thank him for his service again and uh, I'll make a motion to accept his retirement I'll second it any other questions all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries uh, tell Steve congratulations again okay. again um, okay we're gonna go to a close so this is personnel, so it will not be recorded. Is that correct? That's right. Personnel. Oh. No, I wouldn't say it's misconduct. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could record it. I mean. Oh, okay. It's not recorded. Turn it off. Give it a second before you turn it back on. Okay, so we will be recording that. It's a personnel issue, and we'll Thanks reopen the meeting after we're done, so we're going to close the meeting temporarily here. So We do have, Thank if you'd you. like to stay, there's the overflow room here for folks that are going to be waiting us out, if you'd like to, but who knows how long it will take. Turn it off. Yep. Turn it off. <laughs> Give it a second so I have a break. <laughs>